What's up, everybody? It's your favorite show, favorite show, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey, and as usual, I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, as you can see, I got my man Eminem on. We got a little prayer thing going, you know, peep the black on. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a little glum. You know, you see recovery on the thing. All right. We talking about Zion. We talking about Zion. You know, this, this whole shirt really kind of just, imbi- like, you got some prayers. Hopefully he returns. You know, recovery, Zion, he's been injured. Um, right? Well, the Pelicans are actually still in the playoffs. So, might we see Zion play this season finally? Well, I got two things to really think about um, before we, you know, can slide Zion into the starting roster. Uh, first and foremost, I'm thinking about Zion's health and then also Zion's impact. Now, let's start off with Zion's health. So he had a fractured foot. Uh, he had surgery in the off season, and as a result, he's missed the entire season. Now, to be fair, we have seen him do a 360 dunk recently, right? Just casually. So with that, I would like to think that, you know, maybe, maybe Zion's health. Maybe Zion's healthy. And if he's healthy, well, that impact could go one of two ways. Let's talk about it. From a from a negative standpoint, I think right now, you know, it could affect he could affect the chemistry because inserting Zion might affect CJ McCullum's game and might affect Brandon Ingram's game just a little bit. They're the current star duo for the Pelicans, and they're who are pretty much getting saucy for the Pelicans. Now you also got, well, the team, they already have established roles. So not just the star duo could be impacted, but the role players as well. Again, the star duos, they, they know what they're supposed to be doing. They get a lot more green lights, if you will. Uh, Zion comes back. Does that change? And then the role players, well, you know, Zion impacts the game a lot. How does that affect them too? Minutes. Things like that. I'm looking at someone like a Jackson Hayes who's been starting recently. You might go to the bench, champ. And you know, that is not the worst thing. Like, it's just, it's tough. He's been playing pretty well. So from a negative standpoint, how does Zion impact the Pelicans? It's weird, right? I'm saying Zion negative impact because the man is a phenomenal force. Like when you're actually looking at the star duo before CJ McCollum got there, it was Brandon Ingram and Zion. So it may not, like inserting Zion may not mess up Brandon Ingram's role. Like he still knows how to play. It might affect CJ because CJ now has to be more of a point guard. He's been more of a combo guard, but he can play the point guard. I don't think it's really going to affect them negatively, those two meaning. Um, but you never know how it shakes out. You also got teams nowadays, well, you, hey, they need a dominant star, right? They need a dominant player. Look at the Lakers with both Braun and AD. You got the Bucks with Giannis last year. You see what that happened for them. Typically, you need a solid star. And Brandon Ingram, I love, I respect. You know, I'm mad he left my Lakers. But you have to also bring in someone like a Zion's caliber. CJ is not an all-star. He's like a fringe all-star, if you will. But like kind of trending to that six-man or starting point guard caliber role. That that's what he's going towards. That that's not what's going to get you to the contending level. So again, adding Zion does bring in some positive things. I mean, hell, the man's averaging what 26.7 rebounds, four assists, uh, 0.6 steals, and one block. Like that's not anything to scoff at. So when I'm looking at him, also, Jonas Valanciunas, guess what? You don't have to play as hard as you do. And he's older nowadays. Not completely old. Like he's still young in the league, but still. Now, Jonas doesn't have to average 17, 18 points a game. We can scale that back to 12 and 12. Like, why? Well, because some of that... Some of the like some of the points are going towards Zion. Like I'm sorry, they they just have to. It makes the most sense. So, what can he do now? Just up the just up the defense. Like 
improve the uh, the blocks. If we can get 1.5 blocks, that's cool. Like that team, it's actually pretty scary. Like take a look at the starting roster if you include Zion Williamson. Okay, you have C.J. McCollum at the point guard. You got Brandon Ingram at the two, which I love. You got uh, Herbert Jones at the three. Phenomenal young player. Solid little defender. Then you have Zion at the four with Jonas at the five. And then peep the stats, bro. Peep the stats. You see how you see what they're averaging? And I threw Zion's career average in there, by the way. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea as to what it could be. Be. Now, obviously, it won't be this exact way because, again, Zion's coming in. He's taking about 17 shots. Currently, Jonas is taking about 13, so maybe his come down a little bit. Maybe Jones has come down a little bit as well. CJ might dip a little too. He also doesn't have to get a lot of shots because he can get, like, 30 points pretty quickly. And he also goes to the free throw line a lot. But it's not going to be this exact same thing. That's my point. So bringing this starting five into the into the playoffs I don't want to say they could they could win it all but bro they could win it all like this team here is scary and then you have role players to boot and now you're deep you're not necessarily dependent on one player and if you're healthy oh you're scary for anybody like just take a look at the comparison if we're talking about the Warriors okay like, if we look at this, the Warriors team, and then if we look at this Pelicans team, if you notice, for the starting five, the Pelicans win on the points. And mind you, I kind of guesstimated a little bit. I tried to alter some things here and there. So it's not completely accurate. But you see, the Pelicans would be on par in points. I, I have them ahead. They would be ahead on the rebounding. On par with assists. And then ahead on the steals and blocks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Also on the efficiency. Talking about the field goal percentage, the three-point percentage, and the free throw percentage. They're pretty close as well. So this Pelicans team is pretty scary. And again, this Warrior squad is one of the favorites. Like, for this season, they're one of the favorites. And I'm telling you right now, the Pelicans, with inserting Zion, could compete and actually win that series. Like, that's a legitimate shot. So if we do see Zion, I really hope he's healthy. I'm talking about 100% healthy. I don't need, like, I might let you sneak by with 90. I might. But it has, he has to be completely healthy because this is someone who can be the face of your lead or the face of your franchise so if he's healthy let him play if not i'm waiting next season <laughs> it's as simple as that very simple but if he does play people we have a contending team and i gotta say this my man rice told me the other day if the pelicans get past the sun i think I, he, he says you he play zion i say zion can play right now if he's healthy but I do kind of agree, though. Again, it, for me, it just depends on as long as he's 100% healthy. May let you sneak by with that. But if the Pelicans get into the second round, it does make you wonder, will Zion get, like, will he play? I'm sure the team would like him. But, hey, let me know your thoughts below. Please tell me how you thought about the video. Please tell me what you thought about the video. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell anybody who's anybody. And, hey, I'm Trey, host get the, I'm, and I'm the host of Get a Bucket. Take care.